Hello, in this video we are going to be looking at an example of solving the eigenvalue problem which means to find eigenvalues, all possible eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors for a given matrix. The matrix we are going to work with is A. It will be a 3 by 3 matrix whose entries are in the first row 0, 4 and 0, in the second row minus 1, minus 4 and 0, and in the third row 0, 0 and minus 2. What we want to do is to find eigenvectors and eigenvalues for this matrix, uh, and that is to solve the eigenvalue problem. Uh, before engaging with applying the method for finding all these values, um, let us recall what the eigenvalue problem states. Um, eigenvalue problem asks to find uh, solutions of this equation. Now this equation has two unknowns, the k and the, and the lambda. A k is a column vector and lambda is a scalar. Uh, what we want is to find uh, both lambda and k, all possible ones, in pairs. Um, we, we want to know uh, which lambdas uh, make which k's work, or the other way around. Uh, the k's that make this equation work are called eigenvectors, as long as they're not the zero vector, and the lambdas that make the, the equation work are called the eigenvalues. Um, the first step in solving the eigenvalue problem is to write down the characteristic equation for uh, the matrix. This is uh, the equation determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. There is a whole story where this equation comes from uh, which you can um, read up or maybe discover on your own from the theory on the eigenvalue problem. Um, the i there is the identity matrix and uh, so a minus lambda i uh, uh, is obtained by uh, subtracting lambda from the diagonal entries of a. The other entries in that matrix are exactly the same as for a. Then the determinant is this determinant and the characteristic equation is the equation we get by equating the determinant to zero. Um, so what we need to do is to simplify the determinant, see what polynomial of lambda we get, uh, and then solve that polynomial. The um, source of this uh, thing called characteristic equation comes from writing out uh, this matrix equation is a system of linear equations, then moving the lambda k on the other side and hence having a system of equations with zeros on the right hand side of the equalities. And then since we're looking for possible non-zero k's um, that will make the equality hold, we want that system to be solvable and just as with any system, with a non-zero solution, so just with any system, um, uh, with n unknowns and n equations, uh, so the number of unknowns and equations match. Uh, the system of linear equations is solvable when the determinant of the coefficient matrix is, um, has, has a non-zero solution when the determinant of the coefficient matrix is zero. So that's what this determinant is. This determinant will be the determinant of the coefficient matrix for the system of linear equations we get uh, by manipulating with this matrix equation in more elementary terms. Okay, so let's figure out what the, uh, what the characteristic equation is and uh, to do that, uh, as we said, we need to simplify the determinant. Um, so the determinant of this matrix will be 0 minus lambda multiplied by the determinant of this thing here, which is minus 4 minus lambda multiplied by minus 2 minus lambda. Then we have minus f 
4 times the determinant of um, this matrix here. So we want to multiply 4 by the determinant of that. Um, so that will be, I'm just following the, the one of the standard rules for computing the determinant of a matrix. So that will be 4 times um, so let's see what the determinant of that um, matrix is. It's it's minus 1 times minus 2 minus lambda. And that's it because of all the other zeros we have there. And then finally we have uh, plus 0 times the determinant of this part. But, but 0 times anything is 0. So we just have plus 0. Um, okay. Maybe we can find some space here to write out the characteristic equation in full. So, we want to simplify this expression now. Mm, let's see what we have here. Uh, perhaps, uh, since you see, at the, at the end of the day, we want to solve um, the equation uh, that equates that expression to, uh, to zero. Uh, and so, uh, we want um, to factor things out as much as possible. So instead of just open up, opening up the brackets, um, blindfolded, what we're going to do instead is to factor certain things out. And so what, what does factor out here is minus 2 minus lambda. So we can have minus 2 minus lambda multiplied by, and then the rest is minus lambda times minus 4 minus lambda, and then we have minus uh, 4 times minus 1 that is equal to zero. So that's our characteristic equation, although we still want to uh, make it look a bit simpler. So um, let's compute the other uh, part of that um, polynomial. So what is minus lambda times minus 4 minus lambda minus 4 times minus 1? Let's see what that is. Okay, so minus lambda times minus 4 will be 4 lambda. Then we have plus lambda squared. And then we have plus 4. Um, this is the same as lambda squared plus 4 lambda plus 4. I'm just rearranging it to make it even more obvious that this is equal to lambda plus 2 squared. So then the characteristic equation is minus 2 minus lambda times lambda plus 2 squared equals 0. Um, but of course, um, because of the equality with 0, we can uh, multiply both sides by minus 1 and get the same equation with equality to 0. And then this term here, minus 2 minus lambda, becomes uh, 2 plus lambda. So in fact, the characteristic equation is quite simple. It is just lambda plus 2 cubed equals 0. So this is the um, characteristic equation for uh, the matrix we, were, we are working with. Equation for A. There we go. And um, by the way we have presented this equation, it is not terribly difficult to solve it either. Um, the solution of this equation, it has only one solution, obviously, and the solution is lambda equals to minus 2. So that's our unique eigenvalue for that matrix. Now the question is, what is the eigenvector corresponding to that eigenvalue? We are now going to apply a procedure for finding all possible eigenvectors for that eigenvalue, and if we had more eigenvalues, we will just have to repeat that procedure for all the eigenvalues that we would have had. In this case, the procedure is applied only once because we only have one eigenvalue. Okay, so what we want now is to go back to the um, defining equation uh, for eigenvectors, which is this, a times k equals lambda times k, with a note that now lambda equals to minus 2. So what we want is to solve this. We want all possible case, non-zero case, because the zero values uh, are not allowed to be eigenvectors. We want all possible k that make a k equal minus 2k. 
uh, to find such case we're going to write down the system of linear equations and in fact we already have the matrix for it the matrix for it the coefficient matrix for the system so um, let me just remark here uh, what I already said before in passing that this is the same as a k plus 2k uh, equals 0 which can be also rewritten so I'm, I'm just adding 2k on both sides right which can also be written as a plus 2 times i the identity matrix times k and so what we get here this equation here is a matrix equation uh, which whose corresponding uh, system uh, of linear equations will be the one we're just going to write out right now but I'm not going to move to it from here I'm going to directly write down the system based on on this equality here just in case uh, these matrix manipulations are a little bit new for you okay uh, but we still need the matrix A and so we will get it from here this is matrix A We put the matrix A here for reference and um, then uh, inserting that matrix in, in this equality A k equals minus 2 k we will have 0 4 0 minus 1 minus 4 0 0 0 minus 2 and then we have the k which is a column vector whose height is the same as the dimension of A uh, which is uh, 3 um, in each direction so the height is 3 there uh, and so we can represent the entries of the k vector by k1 these are supposed to be small k1, k2 and k3 and uh, that is being equated with minus 2 times the same k so it's k1, k2, this should be k2 here k2 and k3 and the next step is to multiply the matrices on the left hand side and then equate the result to the right hand side and that's where we're going to get the system of linear equations from so uh, on the left hand side we'll have uh, 0 times k1 just by multiplying the, the matrix there with the column 0 times k1 plus 4 times k2 plus 0 times k3 that's the first entry and then we have minus 1 times k1 plus minus 4 times k2 plus 0 times k3 and then finally we have uh, 0 times k1 plus 0 times k2 plus minus 2 times k3 and all of this this column vector should be equal to and now minus 2 can be brought in here minus 2k1 minus 2k2 and minus 2k3 and of course having equality of uh, column vectors means to have equality of individual terms and so individually um, um, we'll get um, three equations and that's our system uh, 0 times k1 um, plus 4 times k2 plus 0 times k3 equals to minus 2k1 and then the second equation will be minus 1 times k1 plus minus 4 times k2 plus 0 times k3 equals minus 2k2 and the third equation will be 0 times k1 plus 0 times k2 plus uh, minus 2 times k3 uh, equals to minus 2 times k3 and then the next step is to move um, the right hand um, side uh, to the left hand side so to, to take all the all these ones 2k1 2k2 2k3 to the to the left hand side and then eventually to solve the system so let's see what we get by moving them on the other side I'm deliberately keeping those zeros there to be illustrative of the shape of the system uh, that we're getting so when I move that on the other side I'm going to have 0 plus 2 times k1 I factored out the k1 there already uh, then we have plus 4k 4k2 plus 0k3 equals 0 and then here we have uh, minus 1 uh, plus 2k no sorry uh, th th that's th that's the coefficient for k1 and k2 they don't add up together 
because k1 isn't the same as the k2. So k1 stays there uh, the way it was, so it's minus 1 k1, and then uh, minus 4 and minus 2, and 2 gets, um, well, minus 2 moved around the, on the other side, it becomes plus 2, so they add up, and that together they give coefficient of k2, and then we still have plus 0 k3 equals 0, and in the third line we have 0 k1 plus uh, 0 k2, uh, and then we have plus, and then minus 2 plus 2 k3 equals 0. Um, I just want to make sure that I haven't uh, made a mistake somewhere. Okay, great. Uh, so, oh, sorry, you didn't see the third line. There it goes. Um, I, I just moved zero m minus 2k3 on the left-hand side like I did in the, in the previous lines. So the system we get here um, has the matrix 0 plus 2 for the Zero, minus one, uh, minus four plus two zero, and zero zero minus two plus two. This is nothing but the matrix we had earlier, um, where we had zero minus lambda four zero. The matrix we we got by subtracting um, the lambda out of the diagonal entries of A. So this is exactly this matrix. And you see, uh, for this system that we have here, for it to be solvable, for it to have a non-zero solution, we need that matrix of coefficients to be equal to, uh, have to have determinant that's equal to zero. And that determinant being zero was our um, characteristic equation. So um, what, I, what I did actually here was to derive the, the very same fact that I claimed in the beginning, uh, just for completeness, um, and uh, on the other hand, those of you who already know that, um, you, could, you could have skipped all these steps and immediately come back to this equation being uh, the coefficient matrix for the system you, you want to work with, and then try to solve this um, the corresponding system, which can be generated out of this matrix, right? So we wouldn't have to derive the matrix all over. We would just uh, get the uh, system out of the matrix here, which is obtained by taking this matrix there um, and substituting lambda equals to minus 2 in it because that's the value for lambda, that's the unique value for the lambda which makes um, the determinant 0 and therefore which allows possibility of non-zero solution of the corresponding system. Great. Um, so what we want is then to solve um, the system of linear equations uh, but first of all, we we're going to simplify it slightly. So the matrix we get here will be, we'll have entries. Um, so 0 plus 2 is 2, so it's 2, 4, 0. And in the second row, we have minus 2, um, minus 2, sorry, minus 1, minus 2, then 0. And in the third entry, we have 0, 0, and 0. Uh, the question is, what is the solution of this um, thing? Well, we can do a little bit of row echelon thing um, and simplify this further. So we get 2, 4, 0. So what do we do here? We multiply the bottom by 2 and add to the first row. I mean, not the bottom, but the middle row. Multiply the middle row by 2 and add it to the first row. What do we get? We get 0 here. And then multiplied uh, minus 2 multiplied by 2 is going to be minus 4. Add it to the uh, first row is going to be 0. Indeed, so the, the, because it's, it, the second row is actually a multiple of the first row, right? You take the first row and multiply that by minus a half, you get the second row. So we get a bunch of, uh, of zeros in the, um, in the matrix, and that's good, of course. That tells us that the uh, system indeed has uh, quite a few solutions, uh, right? So how, do, how to create the solutions now out of the coefficient matrix? Well, there's only one way, which is go back, to, which is to go back to the um, to the system. But now with the row echelon reduction, the system becomes easier to handle. So it's going to be two times k1 plus four times k2, and then we have plus zero times k3. So we don't write that down, right? This is equal to zero. The second equation is zero times something, zero times something plus zero times something equals zero. So we don't need to write that down either, and the same for the third equation. So the whole system, uh, we can maybe just write this down to indicate that things got simplified there. So the whole system reduces to just one single equation. 
And remember, we're looking for all possible solutions of it, uh, and in, in other words, all possible triples, K1, K2, K3. Now, if you look at the system, in the system K3 doesn't feature, but that doesn't mean that we're not looking for K3. Uh, the fact that K3 doesn't feature there uh, means that K3 can be any, any real number, you see? The equations in the system of linear equations does not, does not give any restriction on K3, so K3 can be any real number. Uh, K1 and K2 cannot quite be any re arbitrary real numbers, but uh, one of them can, and then the other one will be expressed in terms of the other. Okay, so let's um, complete that investigation there. So the first remark we make is that K3 can be any real number. Um, and then um, from the first equality we get that K1 is equal to minus 2K2. Just move, moving things around and divided by both sides by 2, we get this result. And so we can say that K2 um, is any real number uh, as well. And um, K1 must be equal to, well, we already have that written down, right? So um, all possible solutions of, uh, of this system are given by uh, minus 2k2 as k1, um, and then k2 and k3, where uh, k2 and k3 are arbitrary real numbers. But we do want to make a note. Oh dear, it's not visible again. Sorry about that. But we do want to make a note that um, k2 and k3 cannot simultaneously be zero because uh, if they're both zero, then k will be zero. So either k2 isn't zero or k3 isn't zero. Um, k1 is directly related to k2 as minus 2k2. So k1 will be zero if and only if k2 is zero. So we don't have to worry about that separately. So just to say that k2 isn't zero or k3 isn't zero covers and completely describes all possible um, uh, case that are not zero and that are still solutions of the equation. So these are all possible eigenvectors for the eigenvalue lambda equals to, um, now I forgot what lambda was equal to, so let me go back here to check that. Um, the eigenvalue was minus two, right. So A, so let's formalize our answer. A has one eigenvalue, lambda equals to minus two, and the eigenvectors for that eigenvalue are, and they are what, whatever we wrote out here. They are these k's. And as we said earlier, if there was another eigenvalue, we would have to do this investigation for that eigenvalue separately and get a separate set of vectors that will be eigenvectors for the eigenvalue. Now, uh, this is not where we're going to end off the movie. Uh, uh, well, rather the, the lecture video or the example video, whatever it is. Um, we are going to um, look at various ways of presenting the answer. Um, in fact, uh, that, that is quite important, especially for uh, later topics that build on um, the uh, eigenvalue problem. Uh, so, uh, one thing to remark that comes from the theory, which I hope um, you are familiar with, is that uh, for, for each given eigenvalue, the eigenvectors, together with the zero vector included, but not, not as an eigenvector, but in the set um, of, uh, in the set that we build out of eigenvectors. So we take all the eigenvectors and also put in that set the zero vector, which wasn't supposed to be there because it's not an eigenvector, but now we put it there. But we, it doesn't mean that we call it as an eigenvector, but we still include it in the set. So take the set of all eigenvectors. In this case, it will be the set of all these vectors together with the zero vector, okay? That thing will be a space. It will be a subspace of R cube called the eigenspace. And just as any subspace of a vector space, it will have its basis. 
uh, and the basis will be a, a more economical way of describing the entire space because any vector in this space is a linear combination of the basis vectors. So what we want now is to uh, have the presentation of the eigenspace in terms of the basis uh, and that's another possible way of giving the answer to the eigenvalue to the solution of the solution to the eigenvalue problem. So let's have a look at that how uh, this can be achieved. Um, okay so what we got so far was um, that the um, well from from what from the result that we got we see that the eigenspace for the eigenvalue um, minus 2 is the set of all vectors of the form minus 2 k2 k2 k3 um, where k2 and k3 are arbitrary real numbers. Notice that here we do include the possibility of them being zero, although that that will not give. I mean, then both being zero at the same time, that will not give an eigenvector, but it will be a member, a legitimate member of the eigenspace. Uh, let me just double check that I've got it right. Yes, okay, I did. Uh, um, so this is the eigenspace. Now um, the the vectors in the eigenspace can be decomposed as a linear combination. Uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to separate the different case. So um, as a first step, separate this into minus 2k2, k2, and put a 0 here in the place of k3, and in the other one uh, make k2 to be 0. So we'll have 0, 0, k3. And then you can see that uh, the original vector is a sum of those two vectors, right? Now we can uh, do the next step of um, factoring out k2 and k3 from each of these columns. Uh, and then we'll have k2 times minus 2, 1, 0, plus k3 times 0, 0, 1. What we've done right now is we have decomposed this vector as a linear combination of two vectors. These two vectors are still um, eigenvectors because you see we can get them by taking k2 to be equal to 1 and k3 0. That's for the first one and for the second one we can get it by taking k2 to be equal to 0 and k3 to be equal to 1. So these two vectors still belong to the eigenspace, they're non-zero, they're eigenvectors. Um, but then any other eigenvector you see this one, is a linear combination of them, right? So uh, basically what we have here is that these two vectors uh, span the entire eigenspace. Uh, and, and recall that span of a, a sequence of vectors is just all possible linear combinations of those vectors. And we've, we saw here that all the vectors in this eigenspace right here, all of them, all of these vectors, oh, you can't see that, sorry, um, all of the... There we go. So you see that in this set, all of these vectors um, have been expressed as linear combination of those two. And that's exactly to say that the span of those two vectors uh, is the eigenspace. Moreover, uh, these two vectors are linearly independent from each other. Indeed, uh, you cannot get any of those vectors as a linear, as a constant multiple of the other one. So they do form the basis for the eigenspace. And hence, um, it is sufficient to name them in order to name the whole eigenspace, just because any vector in the eigenspace will be a linear combination of them. So very often what we do when we want to solve an eigenvalue problem, when very often we present our answer in the following way. We say um, the matrix A that we've been working with has eigenvalue lambda equals minus 2 for which there are two eigenvectors minus 2, 1, 0 
and 0, 0, 1. And what we mean by this is not that literally there are two of them. There are infinitely many eigenvectors. It's just that uh, those two span all the others. And these two, because they're linearly independent, they are the most economical, well, one possible most economical way to spend all the others. Uh, so what we really mean here with this abbreviated way of writing down the answer is that there are two eigenvectors um, which form a basis for the eigenspace. That's what we mean when we say there are two. It's not literally two, it's just that the, the eigenspace is spent by two linearly independent eigenvectors. Um, right, so that's that's all for the video. It was a bit uh, long, half an hour long, um, but it touched on uh, lots of aspects of applying the method for solving the eigenvalue problem and also uh, on uh, presenting the answer. Uh, maybe uh, we can just reflect on, on the whole um, uh, thing we got here uh, that uh, and remark that the, uh, the matrix A uh, turned out to have just one eigenvalue uh, and for that a single eigenvalue it turned out to have a whole uh, eigenspace of dimension 2 uh, and so there are two principal eigenvectors we can pick out from that space which uh, represent all the others um, and let me just say in conclusion that it might have very well been that the eigenspace could have dimension 3 or 1 uh, but in this case it turned out to be uh, that the dimension is 2 um, for other matrices the, that will be different of course and um, that's, I think, all I wanted to explain in this video. Thank you for watching.